And, and what kinds of things would you steer away from a neurosurgeon? I, I guess uh, with time, back surgeries have kind of been studied and come and gone in terms of uh, lower back pain, and, and sometimes we steer people more towards uh, physical therapy. Uh, we've injected uh, Adolf's meat tenderizer into spines, right. trying to loosen things up. What, what kind of advances have, have been made, and what kinds of things have kind of come and gone in, in terms of being in favor as a neurosurgeon? You know, I think that um, if you look back at just even 10 years, and, and that is one thing that's exciting about neurosurgery. I think, you know, you have the brain, which uh, includes, you know, neuroscience and neurons, and, and we're always um, improving on that. Um, with the spine, there's been a lot of technology that's come and gone. And um, I would say what's new on the horizon, what uh, is being looked at closely, are things like mechanical discs or disc replacement um, or what we call an artificial disc. Um, I think the thing that um, people should know about that is that there's a lot of media regarding it, but if you look at a neurosurgeon um, or a spinal surgeon's practice, it still represents only about 5%, maybe 10% um, of patients who have a spinal disorder that that's the right surgery for them. And I think that people just need to realize that. Um, but I think it has great promise. Um, I think what has uh, other things that have kind of uh, come on and that we've tried in the past. Um, spinal fusion um, has been a, an operation that's been around for a long time. Um, and I think that what's happened is that we've gotten better at it and I think better by picking the right patient population for it. I feel uh, there are definitely indications for it, but I think that um, you'll find surgeons being much more conservative than they may have been in the past. Um, I think, you know, other issues, uh, fractures of the spine, um, osteoporosis. Um, in the past, we've, patients have had to live in braces for three months um, in a lot of pain with uh, compressive fractures. Uh, now what we've really developed more over time is a better way to treat that or try to get your patient out of pain. Um, and that's for something called vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty. Um, and that's where they inject cement within the vertebral body. And ideally what happens is immediately the patient gets pain relief because the body firms up. Um, and those are some of the things that are coming along. Yeah. And then uh, the role of the MRI scanner, I guess I, you know, I grew up before those times and plain films were about all we had was one dimension, now you've got three-dimensional views of the brain. Uh, how, how has the MRI scanner uh, been able to improve, uh, particularly in the spine? Can you, are there findings where we can tell people, gosh, this surgery is really not for you? Uh, is, what, what kinds of things would point you away from a, a surgery that, where physical therapy might be more helpful? And, yeah, and I do, I think that's an important thing. Uh, the MRI has come a long way. It, um, it, it has evolved also in its um, accuracy. Um, I, I remember back in 89 when I was still resident that the first ones were coming out and we were trying to figure out what we were looking at. Um, but uh, I think what's happened is that technique and the, the strength of the magnet has gotten much stronger. And I think you're right. I think um, there are definitely situations where uh, it will rule the bad thing out. Um, a patient may have a worn out disc, but not a, a compressive uh, pathology that um, warrants some kind of operation for decompression of the nerve roots. I think it does uh, give us more confidence in, in the ability to say uh, whether surgery is needed or not. Um, and I think that conservative measures of the, uh, the cervical and lumbar spine are really definitely need to be uh, tried first. And there's actually been a recent um, well-documented, well-done studies uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And I think it was really about two years ago. And it reviewed things like um, your common patient who presents with uh, a disc herniation in the lumbar spine was specifically what they looked at. And I think the thing that came out of that was um, up to 80 to 90 percent of the patients got better on their own without surgery and you know as long as conservative measures were tried first. So I think all of that is important so the patients know 
not everybody needs a surgery. They should try the conservative measures, you know, if possible. So sometimes not doing surgery is, right. is, is your best recommendation based on right. your experience and, and, and skill and so right. forth. Right, right, right. Well, could you, uh, could you just kind of guide us through a case? Uh, uh, I think we had a case of, of a man with a, uh, a mass in his brain. Uh, mm -hmm. And we'll, what we'll do is, while you and I are talking about it, if you could kind of guide us through the pictures uh, that we'll be seeing. Okay. Uh, so uh, right now we have, uh, have an image in front of us on a CAT scanner. Can you just point to us a little bit or, or talk about uh, what, what makes it look a little different on that uh, uh, CAT scan that there, you're seeing a mass of? Sure. Um, well, actually, this is a uh, MRI and um, an assessment of the MRI. What it's showing is um, these are images cutting uh, through uh, the brain itself. Um, looking at it on the computer monitor, one of the other things that the PAC system does is it lets us look at different views um, uh, at the same time so that we can look at the brain being cut in one plane and then the other what we call a coronal or a sagittal view. So looking at the image what you're seeing is um, a mass within the brain. Uh, this one would be located in the temporal parietal region. Uh, it has what we call a ring enhancement and that means when a dye is given to the patient intravenously what happens is, is that uh, it takes up this dye and it helps us differentiate um, this mass being a tumor or an infection or a blood clot or a stroke. Um, and so looking at this lesion uh, on these films, what you're going to see is uh, there is a mass, it ha there's a mass effect. In a different um, technique with the same image system, it's really different software, what you can also see is surrounding edema, you know, brain edema around this tumor, and then compression. Um, but that's what you would see on the MRI. All right. Well, Dr. Herman, it's such an extraordinary pleasure to have you in our community to help us with trauma, help people know when not to do surgery when they have a, a low back pain, uh, and to know that you're there to, to back up our uh, oncologist in terms of brain tumors and uh, other problems and uh, knowing when to operate and, and when not to operate, that you have an extraordinary team of uh, to help you with during a trauma and that you have these things available at your home. Uh, what an extraordinary time we have. So Ventura, I want you to pay attention. Uh, the best uh, trauma care, uh, try and use your seat belts. Don't go on the Highway 126 and uh, roll your car. But if you're going to go anywhere, Ventura County Medical Center is the place to go. I hope you feel like you know Dr. Herman. is a very pleasant person, and you don't have to meet him professionally. So Ventura, time to get moving.